So this week I am joined by uh, Jamie, Jamie Pollock. Uh, how are you doing, Jamie? Yeah, not too bad, Warren, not too bad. Good, yeah. good. Um, so as, as always, uh, this part uh, we kind of try to do introductions in terms of uh, how you got involved with the, the Embraco community. So how, how, yeah, how did you get involved? Well, uh, I was very lucky um, that uh, my first job, my boss said, yeah, "Some braco, you're going to be using it." So, you know, as anyone, I was really excited to just like, uh, you know, get involved with a, a .NET CMS, and you know, ever since then, I've just gone from strength to strength. So, gone from like XLT to like Razor to MVC. And, you know, the version seven, which is the next sort of chapter, and you know, just uh, being able to, you know, be part of the community is uh, fantastic. I, I, I like to contribute more, but yeah. uh, you know, just being able to use some of the great stuff that uh, has allowed us to make sites is, uh, you know, where I'm at really. No, fantastic. So, like you said, 2007, that's probably similar-ish time to probably when I started using it. So, yeah, you're talking. Uh, XSLC days, and obviously you've gone through Razor, and now the true MVC, and then obviously V7. Um, so you're kind of a, a hardcore fanboy, so to speak. <laughs> it keeps me in a job, and I'm really happy to be part of the community. So uh, fantastic. Um, so with that being said, that you've been using it for so long, um, kind of what's been the the thing to make you kind of stick around? Um, um, I just why why not learn something else or why 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 stick with it for so long? Well, you know, it's always uh, a bit, no, it's, for me. It's um, it's been something that has grown with my career. So, yep. you know, the fact that it's evolved so much, uh, you know, and it's actually so it's, it's always for me been a serious contender, uh, kind of like the underdog in some ways. Like yep. that, say. Um, but. The fact that you know it is a proper like CMS and it's open source and stuff, and the fact that mm -hmm. it's on evolving, you know, the the core team never stops, and the the actual like people who contribute never stop making awesome things. I mean, after U components, I was really interested to see what come after that. I know we've got stuff like Archetype, you know, yeah. uh, new pickers, all that kind of stuff. It just you know it, and with the like. 7.3 with load balancing improvements, you know, just doesn't seem to be the end. And I'm really excited to get on to 7.2 at some point because that, uh, you know, that's just going to change the way we can give power to editors. So uh, yep. yeah, fantastic. Yep. So today we're going to be looking at um, Birmingham Airport. Yep. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So uh, how? How, first of all, how was this kind of pitched to the client? Uh, was they an existing Embraco user, or was uh, the CMS the kind of the selling point for them? What was what was kind of how how did they get on board? Well, I wasn't part of the actual pitch process, but uh, we we're always quite passionate about Embraco. Mm -hmm. um, it's been something that we made a, a lot of sites for for uh, our clients um, like Jaguar Land Rover, and you know. Just being able to uh, pitch version seven to them—that was one of the main like points for them because they were to edit on an iPad, all that kind of thing. So you know, just being able to do that is a big step up from version six. So we were excited, and they were excited too, just to be able to see because we started development on the site in about October, November. Okay. Um, so at the start of seven point one, and you know, we were both. I think uh, the, the kind of like passion for like. Starting a, a, a rack of seven site was where it came from, really. Uh, you know, say yes to all these things rather than saying no. You know, so uh, yeah. No, fantastic. Um, yeah. So shall we jump over and do a screen share and maybe jump yeah. through the implementation? Let's take a look at kind of what it's all about. Yeah, sure. uh, okay. Okay. So. One of the um, main challenges for uh, us, uh, as far as sorry, as far as um, like bringing the home page alive from an authoring experience, was the hero tools and the background image on the main website. Mm -hmm. So I've uh, got a number of tools here which the you client know, really, uh, really wanted to show to the users. So we've got the we call the FID, the arrivals and departures uh, flight information details tool. Yeah. 
that allows them to be able to do a search within the um, arrival and departures. Um, we've also got a uh, parking tool, and then there's a couple of other features which um, allow them to find like, important links within inside the, uh, the site which people are looking for. So, you know, these kind of things. So being able to offer something which was, could like do a post, say, to uh, another page, you know, and make that effortless for the author, like one of the things you wanted to do. So when first looking at it, we uh, you know, I was trying to get into something like archetype, uh, where we could um, uh, you know manage uh, multiple types of uh, semantic like data, mm -hmm. and then a uh, arrival of departures tool, and then put it onto the, the components. So that's uh, that's where we're going for there. So I can go, I'll show you also not the live site, but you know a a local implementation that you know, show yeah, you how okay. that that offering. So I'm just gonna log in. Mm -hmm. And then we have our here tools right here. Okay, so this is an archetype component then. Right. We've got um, four different types of component. We've got the arrival departure uh, fire station tool. Yep. And you can select an icon from a um a, a, basically power this as a custom document type which comes from the C, uh, CSS. A little bit like the built in Abraco. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But obviously this is our own uh, CSS file which we passed. So we can select um, that. But we also specify a page from a woman's side of CMS so it knows where to uh, post to. Okay. So, um, so, yep. where, so the where you're saying the post, um, obviously it was kind of expanding and collapsing. Um, so is that doing like a, a kind of a get from the arrivals and departure page that that results page is pointing to, or is that something totally different? So if you go uh, back. totally different. So the offering of this is independent of um, the actual page itself. Okay. The actual like markup and stuff we did it in a very uh, .NET MVC Razor view engine way. Mm -hmm. so the actual uh, component is a view model. I can probably show it off, hopefully, if I'm not, uh, I recall correctly. Uh, we've got a shared component, and we use a display template. Yep. Um, let's see, we have a, um, a, I guess it's kind of confusing, but uh, we have uh, basically a form which uh, is built up, and that's used not only on the uh, home page itself, this component is reused um, when you go to the arrivals and departures. So the same component is used there and now. And essentially, we use a, um, a view model class yeah. mm -hmm. to play for to ensure we are using the reference model in both places. OK, that's nice. Yeah, so I mean, I, I really like to follow the conventions using display for. Uh, sometimes it can be overkill, uh, but it just feels really nice and pure. Uh, that way. So um, yeah. So okay. So essentially, we've got the uh, homepage here, mm -hmm. and you can go to anywhere. This is powered by an uh, Beverly Airport themselves. Um, so I presume this is some kind of API or service that uh, Birmingham Airport have provided you guys and you can uh, get the live uh, arrivals and departures information. That's correct, yeah. Cool. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to Frankfurt. So we're going to find people arriving from Frankfurt. And that gives us the information um, for that. You can change it up to 24 hours. I've had this before. Yeah. I can't walk down to sort it out. I'm sure it's. Don't save mate, and that's it. Mm -hmm. Stop saying, take something off. I'll give it two minutes. You can get expression here at server with it. You might not know it. So, um, yeah. So, um, we also have a web API to act on it. Cool. We have a web API to act on it. And then. Uh, do a refresh. 
of ASTIC passing in um, the information to me. So it wasn't the Braco web API because it's not just in Braco layer, yeah. um, but it was using uh, MVC web API. So that was a, quite a, a nice uh, way to reuse some of the functionality. So, um, yep. So going back to the um, actual offering, uh, we also have another thing we wanted to talk about you is the um, background image. We actually need two images split. Uh, split. So the top image here and the bottom image are two different images. Mm -hmm. uh, a technical challenge up front developers uh, gave us. And you know, it was quite easy to achieve by making a custom media type in a bracket. So, um, I found the other correspondence shirt. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so we have a background. Right, well, see, it's exactly the same mm -hmm. as what I had before. We have a number of got a one set up already. So we have a Ricky Vickers, the one we're right now. But we can start to do part of yellow NYC. So quickly, so we publish that. And then uh, give it a refresh. And it's by magic. We now have a, a different set of images. Um, so the actual images uh, were offered um, uh, by. Uh, our offers in-house, and uh, that part of the media section is then, hit, I guess, kind of hidden away from uh, some of the offers for BHX. That way, I know I experienced it before. Setting up uh, image sets, our uh, right. can actually go in and uh, upload them. Uh, so you can actually look into it, and then provide pairs of image sets for them, so they can just select it from uh, from uh, using a new picker. Uh, okay, so you, you guys have kind of given them a, a good set of images to use in conjunction, and then rather than giving them full control, you're saying, look here, use this 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 set of two images and this set of two images. So yes, um, yes exactly. Yeah, I mean uh, it's because uh, the, the imagery for the home page was a bit of a challenge, so we just pretty much enabled it for like uh, people in house to actually uh, do. But uh, conversely, um, one of the real like triumphs um, of uh, the offering system was the actual uh, image cropper um, using uh, the uh, that for responsive imagery and stuff. Uh, the way we chose to use it was um, go into media. We have uh, responsive images and uh, we have say arrivals and departures image here. And that has a number of uh, different types of uh, crop types. So regardless where you um, use the image on the site, there will always be a, uh, you know, you can always use that no matter where you are. So it meant that we could reuse the images pretty much all over the site, whether it be as a hero banner or it be something along the lines of the, uh, the airport. And you can just use those again here. Uh, Okay, so in the different contexts uh, around the site, it, it, it would use the appropriate crop. And yeah, so I mean, just made it really easy to get it gave the authors at BHX or Connect um, a lot of power to be able to check in an image and uh, you know change the, the focus point, and then they know with confidence that it should work sort of out of the box um, all over the place. So uh, yeah, I mean that was one of the uh, advantages in using it from version six to version seven. It was great that that actually those uh, the upload of the image and the actual resizing was tied into one component rather than having a Umbraco file and then you know uh, you know resizing it separately. So you know I thought that was a fantastic uh, uh, change for version uh, version seven. So uh, yeah, very nice. Catch up bit. So um, last not we have um, another thing which we uh, one of the challenges we had was uh, um, some of the content which we are working with BHX on uh, is um, we're working on migrating the content um, stage by stage. So at the moment, the actual destinations and things aren't within the site. But they are. That's going to be a stage two. So just working, um, we're providing uh, our client sort of like the ability to offer links outside of the site as well. Uh, there's a really great uh, plugin that someone did. Um, it was called the. Let's see if I call it up my uh, my package <laughs> uh, Let's see. It was the RJP uh, uh, URL picker. Okay. That was fantastic for just enabling uh, sort of like a EU component style. 
um, you know, flexible uh, pickup, so regardless of where you were um, on the, uh, you know, the, the URL could be like internal or external. So um, yeah, so uh, on the home page we have a bunch of uh, content which links out. So uh, it's actually linked to an external site. So, yeah, they're absolutely fine with that. Uh, or they can buy content with inside the site. So uh, yeah. So um, on top of that, um, another really important thing for BHX from the get-go was their emergency system. And this is something which we decided to go with Pet Poco of uh, using. So um, yeah, so if you got its own custom section with inside the CMS as an emergency okay. system. And this is powered by um, <coughs> Poco. Custom trees and the like, and um, the author can decide that if it's required, they can uh, enable a, uh, a blackout. So, a blackout basically uh, prevents access to the site, or it can enable, or just basically gives any user as they're coming in a, um, a warning. So, okay. it can enable that. So, yeah, so go back to the local version. Yeah, I try and access the page now. So yeah, we got a, a kind of uh, like a like, like a statement or yeah. Uh, yeah. So you know, it's uh, hopefully they never have to use this functionality because it's really when actually really bad things happen or you know just don't go to the airport kind of thing. So hopefully they never have to use this, but this is one of our one of our priorities. And essentially, the way it worked was um, we used um, we had a uh, in our controller system we have a uh, pitch fraud based, and that has an attribute on it to ensure that there's a blackout enabled. And okay, so you've got a custom attribute. Um, right, yeah. So, uh, and then every, every uh, all of our um, document type controllers uh, extend from this this uh, thing here. So it means <laughs> every Embraco request that comes in from a uh, page request means that they'll obviously uh, have to check black, blackout enabled or not. So um, yeah, but that's all using Pet Poco and um, right, so the um, you get to the um, uh, blackout content repository and then just find out if there, uh, there's a um, enabled yeah, and if there's one enabled, to then show the the message from the the node, so it's yeah, exactly. or the database. Yep, exactly. So uh, yep, that's that. And another part of the system which they wanted to include, which is hopefully something which is a bit more, uh, we want to see a bit more of, or rather not see, uh, is the warning banners. Uh, so I'm just going to uh, see. Sorry, we it. We're not going to see that again. Uh, the warning banners are something else uh, which uh, we have at the top here. Yeah. And this is just for more stuff like uh, around Birmingham Airport recently we've had the 845 Ray Works, which is, you know, in the middle of the day for people going to the airport. Um, mm -hmm. uh, just to let people know, um, and essentially that's yeah, all from a very similar way. Um, and yeah, it provides a few fields, and then they can also specify a, a link, and again, they have an external link if they want to. And uh, enable or disable that. So uh, these kind of things were decided to merge outside of Embraco. Um, uh, the blackout case, even though it's using the database, just wanted to avoid, um, you know, having to having people access that kind of content for both these kind of things. They don't really seem like that they fit right into the content model yep. uh, kind of approach. Um, so uh, yeah, in this case, we went down that Poco and uh, used that as a, um, an example of how to use that in version seven. But it was quite uh, so. Um, I was quite inspired by uh, the uh, the tree system, which uh, was available on Nibble. Yeah. Uh, the kind of thing. So that was a big inspiration for that. So yeah. So um, yeah. Other than that, um, I think. Uh, yeah, in case of how um, this thing works, the typical the world, and you know, the thing on it. Um, uh, so, are these uh, tags or facets uh, at the top there? Yeah. Uh, save the author from being it having to um, uh, 
uh, apply tags to things. We actually have a, based on um, a document type, so we have the concept of a section um, page, uh, page and view sections, mm -hmm. uh, automatically uh, add a, uh, like, sort of like a variable to the Lucene index. Yes. So, um, so this is kind of like a group by a doc type, so to speak. So that, you've got yeah. you've got three in careers, or you found three results that are under the kind of like the career section of the the, the structure of the site, which yep. might have the careers document type pages or something similar. Yeah, exactly. Yes. So I mean, it's just basically. Uh, it's just, you remember the top of my head? Um, yes. I don't think how it fell in. Let's see. That's the meeting events. And then, yep, section IDs, and they're basically added to a. Um, a, um, a custom field that you're adding into yeah. the meeting index. Yeah. Okay. Nice. Exactly, yeah. yeah. And then just to make the user experience a little bit nicer on the front end, rather than seeing, uh, say, IDs up here, uh, we applied the URL name instead, and then it just sort of like pass that kind of thing from a list. So um, rather than so, just kind of uh, the URL looked a little bit nicer. So uh, even though it's a very small thing, so um, yeah, very very nice. Yeah. So uh, so the, I guess I'm just still looking through the the site. So let me book. Is that uh, hooked up to any kind of uh, booking ticket agencies at the the airport? So can I go and book my ticket this afternoon to fly out from Birmingham Airport? Um, the actual uh, content is external on a, uh, a different website. Uh, so if you've got your um, Express Lane set up, and that's available on um, the uh, pre-book kind of thing. So we 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 just uh, allow the author to be able to send that content out to a different website. Uh, okay. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So uh, yeah. So otherwise, these are basically um, archetype boxes which allow the user to just by content within inside the site or external to the site. And uh, they can see the responsive image and then they'll know that it'll actually work for the, uh, the grid. So, uh, yeah. Brilliant. Um, so, uh, I, now this is live. Um, how has um, the client found using Embraco? Has, have you had to do kind of much training in terms of like this is how you use your Embraco site, like, this is how you're going to have to manage your content, or has it been kind of really straightforward them forward for them to kind of it's self-explanatory? Um, the training has been kind of minimal, or what's what's been the process? Um, unfortunately, I haven't been actually part of that uh, training. Um, uh, I'm pretty manager. It was uh, the person who gave them the uh, the uh, training, but uh, that's because mainly because they uh, she'd um, used Embraco quite a lot. Uh, in a time here, so uh, the actual uh, we've only heard really like positive things, uh, like uh, especially from people internal who use version six and then using version seven. And we're like, oh, this is a uh, great to, to work with. Um, you know. So uh, yeah, fantastic. Uh, yeah. So is there is there I anything mean, else um, that we've, we've not covered around the other side? Things. Uh, yeah, go on. Sorry. Yep. No, sorry, carry on as you was. Are you still there, Jamie? Um, 
it looks like Jamie's dropped off. So uh, let's see if we can get her hold of him and see if we can finish wrapping up what you were showing us. Um, let's try one more time. Looks like we're going to have a problem getting Jamie back. Um, so, yeah, if there's any questions for Jamie about the site or the implementation, I would say leave them on the YouTube video, and I'm sure Jamie uh, will get back to you and try and answer any questions uh, about the implementation. Um, it's a bit of a shame, because I'm sure he had a, a couple of more points that he just wanted to run through us. Um, so we'll wrap up there, and... Um, Hopefully, we'll see more um, from Jamie and the Birmingham website in the future. Excellent. Thank you very much. Bye.